7 o'clock, and I'll call the July 10th, uh, 2018th Board of Supervisors meeting to order. We do have a quorum. We have Pastor Mike Ingo here from Draper Valley Pentecost Holiness Church to do our invocation. I would ask everyone to please stand and remain standing for the pledge. Thank you, sir. Let me thank the county administrator and the board for you guys continuing this practice. That's, that's a great thing you do. The psalmist wrote that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So blessed is the state and blessed is the county whose God is the Lord. So let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you for this board. We thank you for the work that they do for this county. And now we just ask your guidance upon them and throughout this meeting that the decisions they have to make and all the business that is conducted here would be done to the benefit of your servants and the people of this great county. And we'll give you the thanks for everything you're going to do. In the name of thy son Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, welcome everyone. We'll move on into our agenda. We have citizens' time. Linda Myers. Morning, yes. Linda. I mean, yeah. good afternoon. Hi. I'm here again to talk to you about our Speedwell uh, issue of the air quality. I've been in touch with um, VDAC, with the DEQ, with a whole bunch of people, and everybody keeps, they just shuffle it back from one agency to the next agency. So I'd like to know what you guys have found out since I was here last. Um, anything? Bill, you got an update on. Is there really no change? I mean, the DACs, you know, they do the animal part of it, and the limited size is the number of animals. Okay, let me interrupt that. I've tried to find out the limit. Okay, they, everybody talks about ag stewardship. It's, now they're telling me that they're not, they don't have to do that. It, they're not DQ uh, or VDAC is not. They're the principal regulators, but they don't want to know about volume of animals. They have not been out there for that. So, continue. Right. So that that's their hammer. How do they do that? DEQ, of course, just worry about the water quality and any runoff that might come from that and contamination to the state waters. And the highway department, I understand, talking to Mr. Marshall, the VDAC yesterday, that the slope drain is still there. Nobody seems to want to know or nobody is monitoring that happening up there, according to them. Right, but there, there, there's no set regulation, I believe. And we don't have an ordinance for anything like that. But the state, other than how VDACs will monitor it, no. they do either. No, and I talked to them in addition to surface water about groundwater, and they don't have not done any groundwater monitoring. They shifted again to go to the state to DEQ. It's their problem. Then, start, then they start talking about, are there lagoons there? And what about liquid uh, waste handling? But then again, they say it's an ag stewardship problem and it's a VDAC problem, not a DEQ problem. So here we go. Everybody is passing the buck and nothing is happening. Linda, have you talked to Senator Carrico or Delta Campbell? No, I haven't. Since these are state agencies? No, I haven't done that. Um, I called the EPA. They referred it to DEQ. So we go back and forth. And then I've also called, let's see, I called uh, Mount Rogers Enviro Health, and I spoke to, oh my God, I spoke to a lot of people. And lo and behold, the guy that was there before is no longer there. 
The new turkey is Travis Holt. He knows nothing about this issue. And he said he would investigate it. And that was as far as he went, as far as that goes. So, um, you know, Speedwell's nigh on 200 years old. Um, you've collected taxes from us for years and years and years. The combined taxes of that property with the feedlot is a smidge over $3,000 a year. So if the properties in Speedwell are now worth nothing because of what he is causing, at least he could pay everybody's tax bill. You should look into that. So they have a, everybody there has a significant loss of property values. The businesses, startups, everybody is affected. And there's also huge health concerns. I came upon a study. It's called Animal Feeding Operations, Air Quality and Public Health. This is a 2018 release from a doctor, and it all has the information about, there's diagrams in here about all kinds of stuff from air quality and other possible problems. So we would like to have you guys get to Mount Rogers, talk to them about doing a survey in the area of public health issues and concerns. We're concerned about the environmental damage to local wells. There are people there that do have local wells. Nobody seems to be interested in that. Nobody seems to be concerned about what's going into Cripple Creek. So you guys got busy. You, and you snapped your fingers and you did a noise ordinance. The people in Speedwell would be delighted to have somebody make a noise versus the smell that they have to endure day after day, 24-7. It's absolutely awful. So we are hoping that you're going to do something. Do something. And we'd like to hear from you. What do you want us to do? Man? I don't know. You can pass an or a nuisance ordinance. Something. You can, you can also go to Carrico. You can also go to the state people. You can jump on uh, the VDAC or DEQ or whomever on a continuous basis until this turkey does something because he's killing the village of the hamlet of Speedwell and the surrounding area. Well, we'll continue to monitor it and look into it and see what we can do. Uh, Ted Schilling? <laughs> I'm Cherie Schillick. Okay. Um, we are here because we live on Skowana Springs Road, and I understand that it, that was brought up on your June 29th meeting as far as paving that road. We are one of the people that live on that road that do not want it paved. We've lived on that road for 23 years, raised a house full of little boys, and it was a very safe rural setting. We feel like if it was paved, it would increase the traffic, it would increase the speed. During our years there, there have already been three accidents right in front of our property on very sharp bends. And there's another very sharp bend on that road. But if you have cars going very fast, it's only going to increase that probability. Um, in addition, when we were speaking with another neighbor, it's nice to live on a dirt road where horses can come down the road and people can ride horses and ride their horse and buggy. It's fantastic. 2018, you still have a very rural setting. Um, don't want to say anything else? That's all I want to say. Okay. We are not the only ones that do not want it paved. And we live one of the houses closest down to the road. And yes, it does get dusty and it's okay because we can wash the house and it's okay. Is it affecting your rice? No, the rice is doing great. <laughs> I, was, I, I saw that and I was like, that looks like rice. We were going to Sam and Kathy's one night. And, and Sam and Kathy said, yep, that's rice. And I was like, I never back. thought I'd see rice growing in Wynn County. <laughs> probably the only time you've seen, or probably the only time that rice has been grown in Wynn County. Yeah. Probably. Uh, that's always signed up on you know, Citizens' Time, but I'll give the opportunity if anyone would like to speak. Here's your chance. Okay, hearing none, we'll close citizens' time. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of June the 29th, 2018. Entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion we approve them as presented. 
have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any corrections or changes to be made to the minutes? Here none. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Horney? Aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. And I will back up one payment of invoices. Entertain a motion to pay the invoices. Chair will make that motion. Have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is any invoice any board member would like to pull out or discuss? Hear none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Vault? Aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Whole business. A, Expo Appalachian Regional Exposition Center Emissions Tax Ordinance set public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I put this back on the agenda. You all have previously uh, looked at this ordinance. Um, the uh, next step to be looking at setting a public hearing for this, if this is your all's interest in doing that. The uh, levied amount, the rate on Section 2 of this levy rate would be 10%. Uh, if that's what you all want to advertise, that's what's allowed uh, by the code section. Um, I would not recommend advertising for August 14th. We already have two public hearings scheduled for that night. Um, so I don't want to know if you all want to do it. What, what are the rooms? Uh, the Grouse Ridge Road subdivision is one, and the water rates water is the second. The water rates may have a lot of people here. Um, moving it out to September 11th with that hurt us the, as far as implementing the ordinance and getting it passed and before the center opens? I don't think that it would. No. Okay, let's set it at uh, September the 11th at 7.05. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Do you want to set a, have at least have a motion to set that public hearing for that day? Yes. Entertain a motion to set that. I'll make a motion that we set the date for that and that we advertise that it's the 10% on the admission rate. Can I have a second? Second. Can I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Do we have to look at the full 10 cents? I know so you are advertising the 10%. the maximum, so if you pass the ordinance at 5%. Okay. But if you advertise at 5%, you go to 10, you got to re advertise. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is so set. I will mention, just while I mentioned Grouse Ridge Road, we had a public meeting on Grouse Ridge Road at Max Meadows United Methodist Church last night to go all over everything. I would say. 50 to 60 people were there, a very good crowd, um, lots of support, some concerns from some others, and, and uh, I think we will have uh, quite a few people show up uh, in support and some in opposition to that coming up on August 14th, but it was a very good meeting last night. Okay, Stephen, is anything else under old business? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, that's all. Okay, Mr. Moving. Chairman, oh, yeah. uh, what's the status of the revised noise ordinance that we sent back to the committee we need the committee needs to get back together and talk about it again we talked about a, a few items on it and we need to have another committee get a recommendation to come back thank you mr Bolton, for bringing that up we'll schedule that with the, the personnel committee mr chairman i did have one other question i'm not sure if it would be under old business but in reference to mrs Schilling's. Um, concern. Was that one of the rates that was on the six-year plan? Yes, it has been adopted and added to the six-year plan at this time. So there's nothing we can really change at this point? Well, we can, Unless it was to take it off. We can vote to take it off, but we need to hear from more people on that road. It's not scheduled then this it's year. It's six years out. It's six so years it's out. Six years Next now. year during the public hearing time frame, April, May of next year, you could consider it, and if there's 
and one's come off, that road could be removed off and others added on. So, so it's necessary. It's not necessarily a done deal. It's going to be paid. It is right well, now. It is right in now. Six, in six years, provided all the funding comes to fruition, it would be uh, product to be paid. So but time within the six years. Yeah, every year, a six-year plan is adopted. So every May, June, you're usually about June 30th every year. So there's four, at least four or five more opportunities that you can request a board to have that road removed from the six year plan. And we want to do that like in April? It, when we have the public hearing next year. Oh, yes. okay. We'll put that on the calendar. We'll try to help get you reminded of it. I was, <laughs> was going to say, is there any way we can? Send them something to remind them of it. <laughs> now we'll, we'll uh, anytime we can save the county money, we love to do that. <laughs> I just wanted you to know what your options might be. Yeah, so. thank you. Actually, this money comes from the state. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anything else on our old business? Here and then we're doing a new business, uh, Summit America site plan. This has to do with them adding a generator on site. Mr. Barry, you want to? Yes, very straightforward. I know that Mr. Angles is here with us and uh, another gentleman there. As you can see on the thing, there's adding a, a generator, a uh, proposed location. Um, I don't know if y'all got the overhead map in front of you uh, or if Mark has got it on. Uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, you got more. Okay, there we go. You'll bring up the your board. Thank you, Bobby. Now, we're just adding <laughs> a small generator to power our office um, equipment and a few lights and the vent that powers down. So it's a good ways off of Elite Trinkle Drives, hidden behind some shrubs and some trees. So uh, very quiet, too. So um, I don't think it'd be any issues. Staff did not see any issues. We just uh, have to request uh, approval of their site plan, and we would recommend approval of the site plan to add the generator. So it seems like a technical plan to me. <laughs> well, I entertain a motion to approve their site plan. I would gladly make that motion. To have a second. second. Motion is second. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Where does this come from? Is this a county ordinance? No, sir. That's part of the plan. Why are we making a decision? The Progress Park covenants require a site plan to be submitted for all construction items and any exterior item are required to show an amendment to the site plan. Uh, Mr. Angles has gone through this before. He sent this to us immediately, even though it was a small generator. It would, it would be straightforward, but that's what it's coming from. It's coming from the covenants. Okay. Right. Point taken. I wasn't here. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, fellas. It's your <laughs> bureaucracy that's best. Okay, next time on the agenda is building and grounds committee report. Mark is driving me with anything, but we've worked on that. Well, Charlie does. I've, Excuse I've me, got Charlie. It. The building and grounds committee met on July 3rd, 2018, and made the following recommendations. Number one is approval of building and designs change request in the amount of $906 for a change in carpet type. Okay. Can we add this to that I, too? I would request that we <laughs> add this other one as well that's come up in the last day on this one. Uh, if you want to take up both of them, if you want to vote on that one and then take the other one up separately okay. since it came out of committee. Okay. Uh, come out of committee, it doesn't need a second. Any question or discussion? Judge approves the new carpet. That's why it's yeah, there. That's, 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 that's the only thing I was worried about. As long as the judge approves, I'm, I'm in favor. That's probably who changed it. But, <laughs> but what, what's the real story on the lights? I mean, do we just miss it or do we? Well, we get this one yeah, we'll back. talk right. about that. Uh, so do a roll call vote, Mr. Paul? Aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Now let's talk about the, the lights. Buildings and design, who's doing the work out there, um, look at it. We have 15 LED lights that are in there. That is what we designed in there. Part of that was with LED lights, they've been brighter, and, and we put some like in the, in the rooms that have sort of been too bright. So what Mr. Bowers designed was 15. 
buildings and design has looked at it. Their recommendation, they do not feel that is enough lights to cover the area. Um, and these lights are on a dimmable switch also, so if it is too bright, they can be dimmed down. We are providing the lights, at, we will buy the lights at the cost to provide them. They will install them at no additional cost. So that is uh, the, what has come from building and design. I apologize, I can't get buildings and grounds, but as you know, this is about a six weeks left on this contract and pretty quick. Uh, that's what it's coming from. Right? But the building, the room had gotten any bigger. No, but the whole lights were coming out and these are all new lights going back in. These were, this is what was going in as LED lights. Okay, thank you. No I, additional wire. They're, yeah. they're covering all of that in their work. Is it? Or are they going to be on different switches? I believe, I do not know the answer to that. You just said they're going to be dimmable. It's they're, dimmable. they're dimmable, but what I'm, you know, they use video screens and stuff for trials that are up toward the jury box. They may want to dim it, but keep the other lights on for security reasons out in the galleys. Well, right now the the lights turn on at two different places. I'd say they'll they'll keep at the back and up in the front. In the front, yeah. Okay, I entertain a motion to appropriate appropriate uh, one thousand twenty five dollars for additional lights in the circuit court courtroom. Mr. Chairman, if you will, I believe we have enough money in the budget. If you would just request a change approval of this change order is all we need. Okay. And obtain a motion to approve. I make a motion. Have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other further discussion? Here none we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Ball. Aye. 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 Then the chair votes aye. Next item on building and grounds. Next item, item number two is establishing a new maintenance foreman position for the buildings, building and grounds department. This working foreman position would have oversight of two maintenance positions and would report to the building and grounds supervisor. Okay. Could you explain that a little bit more? Could you explain that a little bit more? Like who's well, wait, to Linda, you're out of order. Okay. What we will ask for question and no further clarification as we do in every other thing that comes up. Coming from the committee, it doesn't need a second. Any other discussion? Mr. Barry, you want to summarize yes. this? Um, during the June 29th meeting, there was quite a bit of discussion in here about the Buildings and Grounds Department, about the lack of maintenance areas, some of the needs, some of the concerns that were out there that needed to be addressed. Um, the uh, went back to the buildings and grounds department and we discussed that issue um, and the basically what is currently we have a buildings and grounds supervisor that uh, department head Mr. Ballard that would remain the same this would be a maintenance foreman position um, and then we would have currently we have uh, two maintenance in the two maintenance positions out there this would be a two maintenance position uh, currently the person that would move in our maintenance foreman position in this proposal is planning to retire uh, as of august 1st and we would advertise for a replacement for the maintenance foreman position there as you know this gentleman has functioned as pretty much a maintenance foreman for many years in what we've done and this would add one additional position in the buildings and grounds department to help take care of a lot of the issues that have been brought up, a lot of the things that individuals have indicated have not had an opportunity to be addressed over the years. I'd also like to answer Ms. Myers. Ms. Myers, by adding this as a working foreman or a team leader, we can hire somebody that will work on these mechanical units and what we should actually save money every year by doing maintenance work in-house that we've been hiring out to uh, different subcontractors to do maintenance work. That's part of the criteria for hiring somebody that they'll have multiple mechanical skills and actually be able to pay their own way. Thank you. And just to go a little bit further into what Mr. Hale said, Right as it stands right now, we've got three people on on buildings and grounds maintenance, whatever. 
give us an overview of how many buildings they're responsible that with county owns. <laughs> Just give us a number. Well, I mean, this is a test. You know, <laughs> they help out and respond for helping out for all the buildings and maintenance, the major maintenance and repairs at the Royal Tree Pool and Campground out there. Obviously, all the buildings in this complex. All of our fire department buildings fall under our buildings and grounds maintenance. Um, the rescue squad building out in the Fort Chisel area falls under that area. Everything at Azure Park, everything at Max Meadows Park out there falls under it. Um, I think that's hitting most of them. Brian can jump in and tell the ones I'm library, uh, the, the library. The library falls in there as well. So, yeah, they do it. Yeah, they do Progress Park, they do all the any of our maintenance work or our needs out there that need to be done, overseeing that. Um, they right now are doing the bush hogging and mowing on our additional land that we bought at exit 77 that we're looking at developing. So there's lots of areas. And unfortunately, as has been brought up, there's lots of maintenance oversights over the years on these county office and courthouse buildings and some of those Mr. Hale brought up before that need to be addressed. And, and and my that that was my point. It, it's I don't like spending money more than anybody, but this is this is a definite need, not a want. Aren't they the ones that take care of the road signs too? Yes. Okay, come from committee. It doesn't need a second. Any more questions or discussion? Hear none. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Horney. Aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Anything else from the Building and Grounds Committee? Hearing none. Animal shelter transfer agreement. <coughs> Mr. Byer. Request your all's approval of this transfer agreement. Um, Ms. Uh, Stacy Pettit has met with Arlen and myself. She has been getting rescue and remember incorporated. Uh, in place. Ms. Pettit has done a tremendous work working with other agencies. Uh, she's also the lady, uh, she and her husband dedicated the air conditioning units and stuff out there at the uh, site. Uh, a strong, she has an extremely strong love for dogs and they want to start their own uh, rescue agency and be able to receive transfers from us. And we have an agreement in place. And basically it just says that they will keep records in compliance with the Code of Virginia, um, and we authorize the transfer of dogs to them. They will provide us with the names and certifications from everyone that they have that will be pulling dogs from them. We have similar agreements in place with other agencies. Uh, Mr. Um, Dunford and I have reviewed those, and we're going to recommend updating those agreements as well because some of their leadership has changed. We want to update those. So they'll be coming in upcoming meetings. But we recommend this, and we appreciate the work that they do. Okay. Uh, I have a motion to approve the lease. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I mean lease agreement, transfer agreement. Uh, any questions or discussion other than that? Hear none. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Horney. Aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Next item, Apex lease. Mr. Chairman, I have put this on the board just for review and, and for discussion among the board. Uh, this has also gone to the Apex Authority. Uh, they are currently meeting tonight, and they may be discussing this also tonight. Uh, Mr. Farthing is with us. He has helped draft this lease. We've had some visions and changes to it, um, but we need to finalize this lease agreement soon and get uh, the, the center in the authority's name so that what they're leasing, they can enter into some agreements and actions on their side. Um, open for discussion. My recommendation be following discussion that we take a couple members from the Board of Supervisors and get a couple members from the Apex Authority and sit down and hash out any differences there and then come back to the respective boards and try to execute this lease at the, uh, the next meeting if at all possible. Okay, hey, you might have any questions. I've got a few. Um, under 
on page four under the triple net lease, um, it talks about the, the lease, the tenant shall be responsible for services, utilities, um, they'll be responsible for electricity, phone, internet, water, sewer, all that. Um, there's no mention of them, the tenant being responsible for providing adequate security. I think that needs to be added. If they have a concert and they're serving alcohol and there's 3,000 people in there, um, they should be responsible for providing security. I don't think it should fall on the taxpayers. And what are we going to do about traffic up there until VDOT decides what they're going to do? And the 41 acres, is that just the buildings? The, the 41 acres is basically all the area that's been graded uh, down through there all the way to, to the bottom of the hill. That is basically the 41 acres. It's the second parking lot on the second level. Yeah, down to the second parking lot. Um, the stormwater management pond basically sort of splits right around that 41 acres right there. We, we are keeping the 56 acres roughly to the east of that and to the south of that line. It has already been uh, subdivided out uh, and has a plat recorded on that. Okay, we have any other questions or anything that would like to be added or to the lease agreement? I, I personally think 10 years is too long, but I, I think it's, like I said, I, I hope that it makes money and I hope I'm wrong, but 10 years is a long time for us to be paying the debt service on it. Any other? Okay, I'll. Uh, Actually, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Stephen, can you explain the real estate taxes part number five on page three? So they're exempt. The landlord is exempt from paying real estate taxes. Yeah. Since we're a government agency and we're the land, okay. we are exempt from paying taxes. Okay. Sorry, I misread. But they would have to pay. They would, it says the tenant shall pay. They'll pay any taxes on personal property. Okay. They buy a personal okay. property, put out there like a tractor or whatever okay. other machine and tools they may use in their operation of that facility. Whoever owns those machine and tools has to file tax attorney commissioner and they pay taxes on that personal property. Any other? Okay, I'll accept anybody who wants to volunteer to be a member of the two panel. Joe, who else? I'll do it. Hey, Brian. Joe. I don't know the parliamentary procedure, but Brian has taken a well-respected person's place, has been against this from the beginning. And just by your obstinance of being against anything for the Apex Center, how can he be productive on that committee? I think it goes both ways, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hale has been a very large proponent. He is a representative of the board, Joe, so if he wants to volunteer, there's nothing that says he can't volunteer to be on the 
okay. on the two-person uh, panel. I think you would actually make a good addition to it. I mean, if they can't hash it out, then we'd just have to go back and start over again. But I, mean, I also agree that it'll make a yeah. Because even though he's not a proponent of it, he still wants it to be successful. So I think we, at this point, we all want it to be successful. Well, the, the authority is established. That's not what we're right. discussing. Right. right. Now, this is just uh, two people from this board and two people from that. Work out the lease work agreement. Out this the lease. Agreement. And the authority is replaceable by this board periodically. You get to place one, Charlie does, everybody as the turn comes, you get a chance to appoint the members of the authority. So it's, it's not like this group goes on forever without the checks and balances of the board. I'm aware of that. Thank you. Okay. Any other things uh, that we need to do with, with that? Mr. Burr? No, Mr. Chairman. I, Did you I get those? Have the comments uh, that, that were given here and uh, we will Schedule this uh, meeting as soon as possible. This is a short-lived committee, isn't it? Basically, once this lease is adopted, this committee's done. So. Okay. Is there anything under other under new business, Mr. Burr? I do not believe I have anything, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Collins. Do you know anything else? School board. Me. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm getting ready to go on that turn. Okay, uh, we'll be recessing the night's nice meeting until 5 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, July the 12th. A joint meeting with the Wythe County School Board at the school board office. They welcome anybody that wants to show up a little early, around 4.30 or so. I think they're going to have some drinks and stuff there. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with most of you all today uh, just to make certain you were Clear on the, the agenda. They've got a couple of items that they want to cover uh, in the agenda, and then we will uh, have the items that you all discuss with me, which is primarily a call sort of financial <coughs> overview of uh, issues that, that have been discussed, uh, and then um, discussion of ongoing maintenance and those items. Okay. Okay, you have your informational pack. You can read your board package. And we will be in recess until 5 p.m. Thursday okay. afternoon. Mr. Chairman, if I yes. could, could three members of the budget committee just meet briefly with me uh, after you recess here? Yes. yes, before, just to let you know, I won't, is it next week, budget committee meeting? Yes. Next, I won't be here. I'll get somebody else sit in for you. Okay, we're in recess. <laughs>